Hello everyone, how are you all doing? I hope you are well. This is the channel A Stitch Too Far, where I talk mainly about cross stitching and whatever comes to mind. Um, it's been quite a while, I, I, I didn't look when the last video that I posted was, but it was before my vacation, so probably a month or so. I, as I said, I hope you're all well. Uh, I've had a break and then I've been busy, so I figured if I don't video now, then I don't know when it will happen again. So here I am. I have lots to talk about. Uh, mainly about stitching and finishing some things, uh, books I've read, uh, things I've been doing otherwise while on a break, whatever, we'll see what happens. Let's just start with some works in progress. Um, if you want any information about the projects that I worked on, you can find uh, details about materials and charts and designers in the the thingy, the box with the video, the description box. So, let's do it. Uh, I worked on several things, but those are also fully finished, so I will show them later. But one of the things, one of my whips that I worked on, my works in progress, was Rain Dance, which is a stitch along for long dog patterns under the hashtag long dog along and this is the one I'm working on uh, I'm stitching it one over one and I absolutely love it and I'm about halfway now there we go I mainly added this bit and some of the border and some of the smaller motifs but yeah love the birds and that means that if you look at the pattern, the next big thing to make to do is the whatever this is. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, absolutely love this. Love the colors, love the size. Yep. Uh, I think it's not. I've, I've worked on this earlier this year, but it's definitely I didn't work on this a lot this year. So might come out later this year again, just to work on some things. I've been trying to downsize my whip pile. That's hence the finishes that I'll show you later. But yeah. Pretty pleased with that one. Then the other one that came out that hasn't come out this year yet, I think, is Takapuna Beach by Character Creation. I think this is an out of print pattern, but you might have luck if you just hunt for it a little bit. Absolutely love this. And I've done quite a lot on this because I think I've been working for on it for two weeks. But yeah, um, I was about here in the diagonal and I did all this diagonal in the past two weeks which was quite confetti heavy in places but yeah I enjoyed it very much we had really warm weather the past two weeks uh, 30 degrees plus 35 sometimes and it was nice to pretend to be on the beach <laughs> instead of having to work during the day but yeah Really happy with this. Got a frog in my throat. Um, so, uh, one of the things that happened in the past weeks, sorry, itchy nose, uh, is that I got a surprise in the mail from a viewer named Glenda, and I didn't ask my mission to show everything, but I'm going to show some of the things because, you know, I want to share in joy. But she sent me a lovely card and uh, a box full of goodies, including, including a new coffee that I can try out. A red diamond coffee. I don't know if that's local to... Oh, she might have written that down. Hang on.
Oh yeah, they are, they, this is made in her hometown, so I'm going to have to give that a try. I'm used to having whole beans, so I have to dig out my uh, percolator, but that, that will be fine. And some grits, <laughs> which I did try uh, when I was in Stitchfest last year. I tried some of the grits from someone else's plate. <laughs> Thanks. They are very nice. So I'm going to have to try and make some of my own. And she included also some stitchy gifts, like a two project bags with final cover, which are lovely with da no, daisies. I think daisies. And a whole box full of buttons to finish things and lots more goodies with also. So I'm just, the only thing that I really wanted to show especially is the flamingo scissors. Thank you so much, Glenda. You did not have to do it as I already told you, but I do appreciate the thought. And I look forward to using everything that you sent me. Um, speaking of scissors, uh, one of the things that I did during my break is that I had uh, I showed you this sort of hat stand, whatever it was supposed to be, that I got at the thrift store at the start of the year, I think, that I wanted to make into a scissors rack, and I did that, uh, and now I finally hung it. <laughs> So I'm going to insert a picture because uh, I hung the scissors rack and I hung some of my finished uh, pieces and I will insert a picture here. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with those. Um, I'm looking at uh, the, the finished piece that I hung, it's, I'm calling it my blue wall, <laughs> so I might have to add some more blue pieces on there. I still have lots of blue, beautiful flosses and fabrics to work with, so I'm sure I'll come up with something, but it doesn't have to be tomorrow, right? So, uh, on to other things I finished because... <clears throat> One of the things I finished was part of the uh, Representation Matters cell and the Diversity and Inclusion cell. I hope I got the hashtags right. But I picked uh, from this book by Brenda Keys. I will link it below. This pattern based on a Matisse painting to work on for that cell. And I actually finished it because that's the fun of having a monochromatic pattern. You can really stitch on it pretty easily. Um, this is my finish and the fabric showing up really pale, but it is in fact a, a warm straw yellow. So it's, it looks like gold really. And I really love how this turned out. So I have to kind of find a way to finish this, to fully finish this. Uh, and display it and another thing that I finished is my boyfriend the tortoise uh, which is from Ross Originals this should still be available if you look around uh, Aboriginal art. I already finished my husband years ago and I finally this year finished the tortoise and I have made it into a wall hanging and when I was going to sew it together I looked at the fabric that I had originally planned to use for it and it just didn't really nicely match the colors so I looked around and I came across a fabric that I thought it would be perfect for it, so I, oh, there's a hole in it, well, oh, who cares, uh, so I found this fabric, let's show it this way first, which is like, dotted like Aboriginal paintings can be, like that one is, 
but yeah and I added my finish to it and this is the wall hanging that is it turned out to be so yeah really happy with how this turned out again the colors from the greens are being washed out a bit but other than that really happy I did what I didn't do this time is add um, fusible fleece to it which I might do next time I make another wall hanging because it's a bit loosey-goosey if you add some stiffer fleece to it it will hang more easily so yeah now they can go on the wall again <coughs> I was planning on hanging it somewhere near this painting, but I don't have a holder for it. So at the moment it's just hanging on my original wall hanging rod thing. Um, and then I had some small finishes that I turned into um, fully finished objects. One of which I had to finish stitching on first, which was this one. And I didn't bring the pattern, but it's by La Dida. It's called Anne Rudolph. Uh, there are some accents with some white color that you can add, but I did choose not to do that. And as you can see, I finished it into a pillow with some backing fabric that I had lying around. And I used uh, some chenille trim that I got when I visited Colonial Williamsburg last year. And this is very thin, as you can see, but it was originally even thinner. It was really like a, a knitting strand, more like a knitting wool kind of thickness. So what I did is I cut three pieces and I sort of entwined them and then I, I, I whip stitched them on. And it's pretty holding pretty nicely and I think it looks really nice like that. Just a little. I might add some jingle bells or something, but I don't, I don't have them right here so that's what it's going to be uh, then I also had some uh, other Christmas ornaments that I wanted to finish into something uh, and this is one of them this is my uh, Rosewood Manor Christmas baskets coffin fit uh, I was trying to say I might add some jingle bells or something to the corners but just to hide the glue because uh, this cording is not really fantastic <laughs> so I had to figure out a way to not have it unwind so I had to glue the ends yeah really like this and uh, the backing is one of the fabrics that I use a lot for Christmas fabrics for Christmas finishes then I have uh, two more I, I worked on this angel at the start of the year and this is how I finished it with a um, dark blue uh, cording and at the back this starry night um, fabric and just a simple cord I, th I was thinking of embellishing it more but I think I'll keep it like this and then this one turned out really cute this is a like a prairie schooler freebie little Santa guy and I had this really big cording lying around and I was planning on using some different finishing trim but I really 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 like how this turned out and then the back is just uh how do you call those the leaves I don't know yeah really like this one so that's all the fully finishing that I did and that's all the stitchy stuff I think let's have a look yeah there's some more but that little I'll talk about that later so I have some things to share uh, oh that, I have a new phone <laughs> And this, I have a new setup, so it's sort of, I have, I have to stay on the edge of the sofa a bit more, otherwise I'll be like a little head in frame like this. 
Uh, yeah, my phone broke during my vacation, which I'm glad I did during my vacation because if it was during a work week, then I would have been in trouble because your phone is your lifeline these days. So my battery basically died and it screwed up my phone that much that it wasn't worth repairing compared to getting a new one. So I frantically looked around for a new one and I got one and that's this one that I'm using now, which I'm pretty pleased with. Um, nothing much else to say about it other than uh, I hope this is recording the way I want it to <laughs> and that I don't have any sound issues but we'll find that out when we get to the editing um, what else happened uh, yeah I've been looking for a new kitchen which is going well and new floor and it might turn out that because I have an open living room and kitchen that I'm going to do the whole floor in the living room as well, which means that I will have to clear out my living room at some point next year. So that's going to be fun. But yeah, I've been cleaning out my uh, clothes closet upstairs during my vacation. So I'm donating a lot of my clothes that are no longer being worn and um, starting to work on my books that I'm gonna get rid of because I'm just my my house is getting too full I need more empty closets for stuff that I'm accumulating over the years um, so that's what's happening this year and I'm, I'm still working on getting some more pictures hung so basically I've been using my vacation time to have a close look at my home and do some home improvements. Uh, what else? Oh, I downloaded Pattern Keeper to try out because I heard that uh, you can now uh, add uh, scans of uh, your paper uh, printout and add uh, an overlay on it so that you can still uh, mark off the grid, but you can't search the symbols. But I use that for um, uh, Takabuna Beach and I love it. So if you just, I have uh, my own copy here at home so I can scan my own prints. <clears throat> so I try to lay the paper as straight as I could in the scanner. That really helps with getting the grid to fit perfectly. But yeah, I'll, I will point you to... Uh, um, Oh gosh, what's your name? Stitch in it, I think, is her floss tube name. And she has some videos about Pattern Keeper and how to use it. And especially about uh, adding a grid to your uh, uh, PDF uh, that, uh, that, that isn't suitable for uh, Pattern Keeper otherwise. So yeah, we'll do that. Thank you very much for doing that, by the way, because... I would never have tried it otherwise, and I absolutely love it now. So, we'll have to purchase the full version. And then, let's see. I got some stuff in the mail, finally. <laughs> First of all, I got this um, a Sulky 12-weight uh, thread, which is looking extremely blue. It is not this teal color. It is, in fact, more of a forest green with some navy blue and some lighter green so I don't know what's going on there yeah more like that that's just a light apparently see yeah so it's more like this and I got 300 yards of it 330 yards of it and I know I purchased it for some reason but so this is going in my stash <laughs> And whenever I get my memory back, I will use this. But yeah, I was I was curious as well to try this out and see how it would, would work as a single thread. Um, I don't think it will give enough coverage on a 28 count, but on the higher counts, like I tend to use like 36 and 40, this should be fine. So, and it's 300 meters, so I think it's enough to do a, like a larger pattern, like a long dog maybe, I don't know. I'll have to figure out what I was planning on using this for. But I also got two of my uh, Silk of the Month um, 
shipments that have been in en route from Australia to me for months with the coronavirus. So I'm going to show you those. Hang on. Uh, this is one set. This is PR005. Yeah, really nice blue. It's showing up a little bit more vibrant than it is in real life. It's more of a dusky, dusty blue. This is beautiful brown. This is 047. Yeah, that's showing up pretty accurately. It does remind me a bit of uh, 08 from DMC. This is a nice uh, dark purple. This is 016, which is showing blue. Yeah, it's a bit more, hang on, can I do this? No, now it's turning blue. Yeah, it's darker than what is showing in camera. And this is a vibrant red. This is 023, which is looking orange. <laughs> oh my God, lighting sucks. Yeah, it's showing bright orange, but it is a red. Even here it's showing bright orange. It's, oh, and my nails are showing orange. That might be the camera or it might be the lighting. I don't know. But, yeah, some good solids. There's no variegation in these. And then I got another one. I think these were the March and April uh, shipments. Because these are, these look a li little bit more Easter colors. This is 011. This is a bright yellow, which again is showing up. Muted, but it's like a, or, uh, a lemon yellow in real life. Not that variegated. This one is variegated. This is a PR0096, which is the same yellow lemon color, but then with a bit more gold and a bit more soft yellow variegated. Again, it's showing up really, really white in my camera. But it is really nice, or uh, lemon yellow. This is a mixture of all kinds of colors. This is PR131. That is showing up pretty accurately. The blue is a little bit more dim. Yeah, this is better. And then the last one is a really bright neon green, which is 007. Yeah, it's definitely like a highlighter green color. So yeah, I'm happy that those finally came. The mail is a mess this year with COVID, but it's just a matter of being patient. What else have I been doing? I have barely watched any floss tube videos. I just have not been in the mood and too busy or reading. Uh, so not much going on there. Uh, yeah, reading, that's the last thing I need to discuss, I think. Just checking my notes. So, reading. Um, we had a book discussion in the Cross Stitches Who Read Facebook group that is run by Caroline from Off the Grid Needle Arts and by uh, Crafty cur Curator Leticia. Uh, she, did, uh, she hosted the discussion of the book uh, The Lace Reader by Brionia, Brunonia Barry. <laughs> I will link it below. That was really fun. There was a good discussion. There was a lot. It, it's, um, it's a difficult book. It's a complicated book to read. So it was really nice to discuss those things that, be, that were, people were unsure about. Or So yeah, it helped me understand the book and the story better. So it was absolutely lovely. If you want to join the Facebook group, go ahead and send a request to Leticia or... Caroline, through the Facebook group, they have a form that you can fill in. Um, and they have selected a new book to read and discuss. 
let's see if I have it here, which is going to be interesting, I think. Now, where is it? Oh, here. Uh, it's by Kazuki Kaneshiro. I hope I said that right. Uh, called Go. I will link it below. Uh, I think they have planned to discuss it end of September, start of October. So that's what I'm going to read in September. Uh, yeah, looking forward to that. I was really pleasantly surprised by The Lace Reader. It would not have been a book that I would have picked out to read by myself. So being forced to read it uh, with a book club, uh, that really opened up a new offer to me. So yeah, lovely. I highly recommend joining. But I have been reading stuff uh, on my own from my Audible collection or my Audible subscription. Um, there's a few I would like to mention. Let's see. Um, yeah, there was uh, Audible. If you have a membership, a monthly membership, you can select every month. They have offer a selection of free Audible only books. And this is the one I picked up a few months ago. I hope you can see that. It's a series of eight stories. Let's see if I can have a picture of it somewhere. Yeah, for some reason, it's usually I can't see uh, more of the information of the author, but this doesn't show up. This shows the single chapters, but it's called In Search of Black History with Bonnie Greer. I will link it below. It was really good. It was uh, eight single chapters with all different kinds of subjects relating to all, all kinds of uh, history or, or situations across the world uh, with regards to black, from a perspective of black history. Very interesting. Uh, but that is, uh, I think that's only an audible. So it's an audible original. So I'm not sure if you can get it if you're not a member. But you might have to. You could look around for it. Then uh, the sequel to uh, An Absolutely Remarkable Thing came out, which is by Hank Green. Okay, now this one is showing up. This is the, A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, which is the second in a series by Hank Green. I think this is the last part, though. I don't think there will be a sequel. I really enjoyed it. I loved the first book. I did love the second book, but I think I have been waiting for it because I pre-ordered it for in, I think, in December. So I've been waiting for it for a while. So the anticipation was high and it didn't fully uh, satisfy the anticipation, but still definitely would recommend if you like young adults. And it is all about the influence of social media and the power of social media. And uh, definitely worth a go um, if you're into that. Uh, then another one I would like to share is um, uh, Rachel Kaddish. I hope I'm saying this right. The Weight of Ink. Absolutely love this one too. Um, this is a book uh, uh, about love, basically, and about... Uh, loving the way you want to love so it's also about making choices and uh, it's um, it's a combination of a story set in the present time with a, a, a Jewish historian who, uh, who studies ancient scriptures and uh, it's intermingled with a story set in the, I think it's the 18th or 17th century with a Jewish, in a, in a Jewish community in London, I think London, yeah, England anyway. Um, and they sort of intermingle, but they both are about uh, the choices that you can make as a woman in life uh, with regards to your future and uh, your love life, basically. Really interesting. Really enjoyed it. Um, then I read the first part in a series by, who is it called? 
Bernard Cornwell, The Last Kingdom is the first in the series. Uh, it's set in, um, in in England in the times that the Danes, the Vikings were invading the country and taking over parts of it. And it's basically a story about uh, an English nobleman and his journey with regard to uh, being conquered by Danes or escaping from them or trying to conquer them. It was fun. Uh, I think it has uh, definitely a lot of historical uh, it's historical fiction, so it has a it, it has a baseline of true history. But the story of the, the main character is is fictional. I think uh, it was fun. I don't think I will read another part in the series though, because um, by the end it was a lot about how he loved fighting and how he was good at fighting and that just got a bit boring <laughs> but it was entertaining so yeah um, then I just finished another of those audible original recordings and I would like to recommend that too because it was a really interesting story um, it's called life ever after I hope that's focusing. I will link all these below. It's by Carla Grohls. Um, um, it's a story of two people and it's set in the future and it's about uh, artificial intelligence and making life choices about how much of your life will be influenced by uh, future possibilities of healthcare. So for instance, uh, it's a bit like um, me robot or I robot something like that where where people have parts of themselves that are artificial and that also have like uh, help you make decisions or make life choices and how far are you going to let that go and how does that influence your personality that was really interesting to read uh, so yeah uh, what else I had some, I bought some new books that are going, to, going on my wish list, including, oh, what's going on here? Let's see. Uh, let's do this one. Yeah, there's not one particular that I want to mention. I will mention them when I read them, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to read next. I might start with, uh, with the one for the book club next. But yeah, having a really nice time reading. It's been so hot that it's hard to do other things when... Because your work day takes a lot out of you. And then in the evenings you just want to just do nothing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm trying not to rush too much, but I think a half an hour should be nice length to catch up and no idea when I'm going to be back. Uh, probably in a month or less, but we'll see. And I hope you are all doing well. Stay safe. Uh, see you again soon. Bye, guys.